Welcome to a new episode of my Home Automation Open Hub Node-RED playlist. In this video, I'm looking at the Xiaomi Mi Flora Soil Moisture Sensor. This is a little CR3032 cell uh, operated device, which is designed to be plugged into the soil of your flower pots and to measure luminosity, ambient temperature, soil moisture, soil fertility, and transmit this information over Bluetooth Low Energy to a smartphone. An app sitting on the smartphone is monitoring these values and gives you indication on how your plant is doing. But I'm not bothered about the app. I want OpenHab and Node-RED to directly access the data from this device. You would probably say that there are many different options uh, for measuring temperature and maybe soil um, uh, humidity. But also consider this. You can get this device for about 10 US uh, with free shipping. And for that, you are getting all these sensors and battery power, which is a pretty, pretty good price. Um, of course, the downside is that uh, this being Bluetooth low energy, you probably need to be in the same room as uh, your Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to connect. But I haven't really done any, um, you know, tests on on range. But but again, Bluetooth low energy is you, so you probably have an idea based on your Bluetooth speakers and some of the other Bluetooth devices. If you start to Google EME plans and um, and like Bluetooth and reverse engineering, you, you will find quite a few sites um, uh, where they have already done that. And I've started off from here and then I've, I've I found this other project here in the in the Warsaw hacker space. And um, uh, so what seems to be the big difference is the um, when you install the application, the mobile application for this um, um, device, then uh, for me, at least when I, I did it, it upgraded the firmware on the on the on the sensor. And um, people um, notice the same that after a certain firmware firmware update, the previous code wasn't working. And uh, this guy actually managed to figure out um, how the um, the host needs to communicate with the device in order to get all the data, because they seem to have changed the code how they um, how they are storing this information. So here at the end of the um, is um, page, um, I find this Python code which actually works uh, for my device, which is uh, at version two point six point six. So I use this to uh, to get my data uh, from my Bluetooth device. And uh, what I've also done is I've uninstalled the mobile application just to make sure that the firmware doesn't get updated in case they change the, the logic again. So um, maybe that's something that you can do in the future. Um, I think in the app you can rename your device. So if you have multiple of these sensors, then you can just rename them and it would make it easier to, to find the appropriate one later. So now, once we understood how this code works, or well, we know that this code works, we can jump over to the Raspberry Pi. I have Midnight Commander installed just because it's easier for me to navigate and then view and edit files here. In my home Pi directory, I created this um, Mi Flora Pi. So if I go and edit it, then um, well, you can see it's somewhat different from the from the from the code here, but uh, actually the beginning of it up until here is is almost the same. Um, I added this line here, which we will be needing later. Um, so again, you need uh, the Gatlib library uh, to access Bluetooth under Raspberry Pi, and you might ha not have that, so you need to install that. And if it doesn't install, just make sure that you install the dependencies as well. Uh, the first modification I made is I changed the this address line. So here in the example code, it was hard coded to a, a device address. I've changed it to the first argument. So it takes the first argument in the command line to execute it. Um, uh, and then everything else is the same. And and then my changes come from the last line. So it still will print on the screen all the um, the sensor data and then it will come here. Um, what I'm doing here is I've noticed that sometimes the version number which you are getting back from the device has a, a special character right in the beginning. Um, I don't know what the reason for that uh, is, but anyway, I've, I've done this small piece of code which gets rid of anything which is not a dot or a number, uh, just to make sure because it was throwing up the processing later. The next, I'm going to save all this information in the text file in a JSON format. 
and then after that I'm going to publish the information on MQTT as well so I've decided that to use both of these methods um, so if you don't have MQTT you can use the text file method if you have MQTT you can just use that um, so I'm opening the file I'm writing all the information out in JSON and I'm closing the file and then pretty much the same in MQTT so I'm all uh, connecting to my MQTT client I'm using a user ID and a password which obviously you need to change and then I'm publishing the same information into MQTT uh, well as you can see I'm using a fixed um, topic here uh, so again, that probably needs some changing if you have multiple uh, sensors in your home. Um, so that's that's all about the program and let's see how it works. And just to show you the file which got created, so it's uh, meflora.json and that's how the JSON file looks like. So uh, I'm using JSON because both in uh, Node-RED and OpenHAB there is a possibility to easily um, parse information in JSON format and get the individual details like the battery value or the sunlight out of it without um, uh, much programming. Well, in fact, with no programming at all. Okay, so this is how you execute it. And you get all the details back and it's done the update as well, but there is just nothing on the screen which uh, gives you an indication of that. Uh, what I've also noticed is that sometimes you are getting all sorts of errors, um, like it can get the battery level and the firmware version out, but then after that it throws all sorts of errors and you just execute it for the second time and it just works. So um, I don't know whether it's an issue with the Bluetooth or the script or the device, but again, it hangs from time to time but uh, it's not really noticeable. So the last thing to do is um, to schedule this um, script to be executed every 15 minutes. And for that, I've, um, I'm using the built-in scheduler in Raspberry Pi. So I said that every 15 minutes, so star slash 15 and, and then four more stars with spaces, I do Python and home Pi me flora Pi, and I'm passing the device ID and the file name that it needs to the, the output. Uh, to be saved or the information to be saved on. So that's all it takes to get this uh, the job up and running every 15 minutes. And I forgot to tell you one thing is how to get the um, the device ID. So you need to do HCI tool and LE scan. And that would, that would do a Bluetooth low energy scan. And you can see that my um, me flora is coming up here is is the default name is flower care so that's the ID that you need to put into the command line uh, to to get the data from this particular sensor now that the sensor values are getting updated in the system every 15 minutes it's time to configure the uh, the, the device in open hub so I'm in the items configuration uh, no changes uh, needed to be made in the open hub configuration <coughs> And I've created a separate group uh, to store the, the values or the items uh, from, from everything else. And as you can see, I've created six, uh, six items. Um, one of them is string, which is the version, and all the others are uh, uh, simple numbers. And in the text, I've also uh, added the, um, the bits so it's getting displayed on the screen. So like the battery is percentage, the firmware is a string. Sunlight is again, uh, it's a decimal in looks. The temperature is one uh, decimal place uh, float, and again, percentage for so uh, moisture, and then the special um, uh, value for the fertility with the, uh, with the special unit. I've also assigned some icons to them, so you can see in the uh, um, uh, in, as an X parameter and I've uh, linked them to the uh, MeFlora group because I wanted to plot the values on a chart as well but for some reason that chart is not working as of yet and I'm using the exact binding uh, to get the values from the uh, from the JSON file and I'm using the cat command to you know read the file content and then in the second parameter 60,000 tells the system to read these values every every minute even though it only gets updated with, with uh, from the sensor every 15 minutes and then in this in the third parameter which is the JSON path I'm telling the system to you know treat this as a JSON format and and get the corresponding values slow so like dollar dot battery dollar dot version dollar dot sunlight will get the individual values from the JSON file 
So again, as I said, no programming needed. The values are just getting read from the text uh, file straight away in the items configuration. And the second file to edit is the sitemap. And in the sitemap, I just added a group uh, which displays all the values in a text format. And I also wanted to add this chart, which is still not working for some reason. I thought maybe because I've added a value, which is uh, like a text value. So this is why the version has this me underscore flora, as opposed to all the others having me flora, but um, I'm not really sure. And also in the persist, I said that, okay, all the me flora values, which should have the strategy of every minute and restore and startup. Well, probably restore and startup is not required, but every minute is required for uh, plotting a chart, but um, uh, for whatever reason, it's not, not appearing. And um, I've showed you the screen before. So my home screen has this thing just to make sure that, well, I just I wanted to separate all the all these different test scenarios from each other. So you can see nicely all the different values which are coming from back, back from the device. And the, the, the value should be plotted here, which is not happening right now. So that's something I need to figure out uh, in the future. And now let's move over to uh, to Node-RED. Um, I've created a new tab um, to, to read the information from the Mi Flora device. Uh, I'm using MQTT here. So um, uh, I put the node here for reading MQTT information. You double click, you first you need to set up your server details. So that will be your local IP and 1883 for um, non-secure connection. And then in under security, you set up your user ID and a password. That should be pretty much it. And next, you need to uh, specify the topics that you want to subscribe to. And again, that goes back to whatever you uh, specified here in the in the file. So it's the slash home slash me flora, which is the same here. So we are subscribing to that topic. And, and basically, that information will come for here. And again, what we are getting um, in, in over MQTT is uh, the data stream in JSON format. And um, to read JSON, there is a JSON node here, which converts JSON back and from uh, to and from JavaScript object, which uh, Node-RED can handle. So you 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 do that. Um, you add this node, and then next, um, I've created this function nodes, which basically say that. Um, uh, I'm reading message payload dot and let's say temperature. So again, the same values that I've um, specified in the JSON format and I put it into the payload because then the, the payload goes into a text node on the UI, which displays the information. Um, well, you can argue that probably you wouldn't need the, the function node because what you can do here is you can do just message.payload.temperature to display the temperature. And then probably, oh, you can't do that here for the chart. So you definitely need the function node for the chart. Um, so I decided to, to put um, a, a node um, for each of the elements to be shown on the on the UI and for the temperature and the sunlight and the battery level also plotted on a chart as well. And if you deploy this um, uh, this code, then you will get all these values nicely on your home screen. So it's called me flora and you see the temperature and the graph for the temperature is shown above. So now it's shooting up because the sun was shining in the um, in my window and the battery level and then the sunlight, as you, can, as you can see, it always shoots up quite a bit when the sun is out and the moisture level, which tells me that I need to water my plant. That would be all about integrating the Xiaomi Mi Flora soil moisture sensor to OpenHab and Node-RED. Please check out the description of this video where you can find all the links and source code to build this project. I hope you find this video useful. See you in the next ep episode of my home automation series.